Welcome to the International Space Station. How is the food and do you crave any particular foods? Uh, the food is really, really good. Um, the food is largely um, in packages that's thermal stabilized or um, dehydrated. So the foods that I really crave are fresh fruit foods. In fact, I had an apple that was delivered on a cargo spacecraft up here, and it was one of the best apples I've ever tasted in my life. What do you do on a daily basis in the, in the space station? We are doing lots of lots of scientific exper experiments every day, and uh, it's very interesting. Could you tell us about a plant experiment you are studying in space? Yeah, we have a, a plant experiment that's just wrapping up now called Apex 5. We're uh, growing some seedlings, uh, growing uh, sprouts from seeds, and uh, we've got a lot of plants growing up here right now. I couldn't tell you the names of them. I looked it up, and it was a nine-syllable Latin word that I couldn't possibly remember right now. What got you interested in space? That's a good, interesting question. I was working in Japan as a Navy diver, and uh, I was working for the deep sea diving. And uh, I got interested in extre extreme environment and the human body relation. And uh, here we are, the space is also another ex ex extreme environment. So uh, that's why I got interested in space program. What is one thing that surprised you the most about being in space? What surprised me the most about being in space was how much it felt like floating. Actually, because I'm so used to being pulled towards the ground, floating initially felt like I was being pulled up and away from the ground. So when you float along, if you just tap your toe on the ground, it'll send you towards the roof. So it's a, it's a feeling like you're always on a spring, um, which surprised me. Um, yeah, that's the mo biggest surprise I would say. I really, now I really enjoy it. It's very easy to move around and uh, really a lot of fun. Do you clean up messes or spills on the ISS? Aha. Since uh, the water is a little bit tricky in space, so we are using uh, uh, wipes, dry wipes, wet wipes to clean the spills. I think the question was, how do we see at night? Do we see the moon? And if that's the, the question, what I'd say is my favorite time to look at the Earth is at night with a full moon because the moon from space on the Earth, especially over deserts, is absolutely incredible. And also because of the lights from where people live, you can pick out very easily where there's large amounts of people at the same time as you can see the natural beauty of the Earth. Could you see the recent forest fires in California from space? So I was on the space station when, we, the, when those forest fires were in progress and I, I did see them out the window. In fact, I think it's possible that you might be seeing a picture right now that one of my crewmates took from the space station of those fires. Is space junk a problem for the ISS as it orbits Earth? Yes, sometimes uh, the space uh, chunk uh, we call debris is uh, dangerous for space station. Then we have a special maneuver called the de debris avoidance maneuver and uh, basically changing the, the height of the space station and uh, avoid that debris. What plants are you currently growing on the ISS? Um, I'm not sure the exact name of them. Again, there are uh, seeds that were grown out of seedlings. I can tell you in the past, I'm sorry, seedlings that were growing out of seeds. 
I can tell you that in the past we've grown some lettuce and there's a type of lettuce that we actually got to eat called Mizuna and it was actually very delicious. What, what does it feel like to be on the space station? Actually, we are really enjoying uh, this uh, special environment. Uh, we are floating uh, all, day, all day long and... Uh, nice mic, Mark. And uh, we are also every day doing uh, very, very interesting experiments. So uh, it's really fun. What type of training did you do to be ready for space travel? We had to do a wide variety of training, from medical training to, uh, of course, a lots of physical training. Uh, we had to train underwater to, tr to prepare for spacewalks. We fly in jets to help us be better at working as members of a crew in high-performance uh, vehicles like spacecraft. Um, we also train on simulators for robotics, and we actually use simulators for uh, spacewalk training as well as well as lots and lots of training about how the spacecraft actually works and what to do in emergencies. Are you allowed to bring any small personal items to space? And if so, what did you bring? We are allowed to bring small personal items. I brought some uh, uh, small items for friends. The thing that's most important to me that I brought with me is my wedding ring. <laughs> what is the worst part? What is the worst part about being in space? The worst part of, of being in space. So maybe uh, I miss my family, friends, countries, apart from these, you know, things and working. Uh, uh, only we, we are six astronauts in space station, so I miss uh, my family. What is the most exciting experiment involving liquid you have performed on the ISS? We have all kinds of exciting experiments going on the space station. Some of them do involve liquid, but what we're going to do today is do our own. We're going to try to see how large a uh, a ball of liquid we can make with this chocolate milk. So watch. Were you able to see that chocolate milk ball? It was about the size of a ping pong ball. What is your advice to young people dreaming about becoming involved in NASA space program? I would advise young people to first find out what it is they do, what, what they love to do, and ideally find a way to do it for a job. Uh, if you want to get involved in, in NASA space program, NASA hires people from a wide variety of backgrounds. Of course, you need to study a technical field. And, but all those people tend to really enjoy what they're doing, and that's a reason that they were so successful at they, what they were doing before they started working at NASA. What do you do in your free time? During your free time, I like taking a picture of the Earth. It's very uh, changing and uh, very, very beautiful. What parts of the body are most affected while in space? I think the bone and the muscle is uh, very, very uh, affected by the zero gravity. So uh, as an astronaut, we have to uh, physical training every day, two and a half hours, uh, doing uh, uh, machine training and uh, running and uh, cycling. Otherwise, uh, we are losing muscle and bone. And uh, after coming back home, we cannot, 
you know, uh, we cannot move uh, as we did before the mission. What is your favorite science experiment you have been a part of while in space? Wow, there's so many. Um, my favorite ones are the ones where I can actually see the experiment that's in progress. So things like the uh, spheres experiment, um, where you can actually see the results immediately. From Because I'm really kind of like a laboratory technician up here, I'm not so much a scientist where I'm gathering data, making observations. There's lots of things that happen without astronauts interacting with them, but we have to make sure that the equipment is running smoothly. But some experiments, like uh, uh, the this, this spheres experiment, where we were able to see small satellites maneuver around inside the space station, that was really fun for us to participate in. I attended, I attended space camp. Do, do you or anybody you know attended space camp? I did not attend a space camp, but I know at least two people that did attend space camp. Uh, both of them are astronauts now. Since we still have a little time, I wanted to know, have either of you been on a spacewalk, and what is it like? That's interesting that you ask this question, especially right now. Um, we're getting ready to have two spacewalks, and Norishige and I will be doing a spacewalk on the 29th of this month. Um, I have done a spacewalk uh, a couple previously, um, and what is it like? Wow, it's hard to describe. It's, it's, uh, it's both exhilarating and scary, as you can imagine. It's exhausting and exciting. Um, I'll never, the, the one moment that really sticks in my mind is when we were getting ready to leave the space station. Um, we we're in a crew lock. It's a, a small tube, two people laying down inside of it, waiting to go outside. The moment <clears throat> that was really special to me was when the commander for the spacewalk, op the commander for the space station who did the spacewalk with me, opened, opened the airlock to the outside, to, to the open space. And suddenly that small tube that was only lit by um, lights like you see inside the lab was lit by the reflections of the sunlight off of the earth. So it got extremely bright. It felt just like opening up a door of your house to go outside on a sunny day. And I knew it was gonna get real. It was a really amazing moment for me. So another question, how did you get to the International Space Station and how will you get home? Actually, we are using a Russian spacecraft named Soyuz. It's a three-man spacecraft. Of course, the commander is Russian cosmonaut, and uh, two seats for uh, either Russian, American, European, or Japanese astronauts. And of course, we are using same boat going back home. So another question we had is, how do you sleep on the International Space Station? I think you might be sure of this. Uh, we have sleeping bags that we can mount on any surface because any surface is basically equal in space. There's not really a physically defined up or down. They, every surface reacts exactly the same. So for Norishige, his sleeping bag is on this upward surface. Um, for me, my sleeping bag is on this surface, but for both of us, we tend to sleep kind of like this with our arms sticking out of the sleeping bag, just floating in front of us. Since it's an international space station, do you have to learn other languages to be in space? Actually, uh, since we are using a Russian spacecraft, we have to study uh, Russian language. Sometimes with Russian crewmates, we speak in Russian language. 
and uh, since I'm Japanese, so everybody can speak a little bit of uh, Japanese words. Did either one of you by chance work on any of the Eli Lilly uh, experiments that went up to the space station? I am not sure. Those uh, could be going on without us even knowing about it. I, I don't know much about that particular experiment. That's okay. We have a scientist who has an experiment up there, so that's why we were, yeah. we were asking. <laughs> So we always know, kids ask, how do you brush your teeth or take a shower in space? So brushing our teeth is, the, I'd say the only difference is for me, brushing my teeth, I, I can't spit the toothpaste into a sink. I have to spit it into a piece of tissue paper because that'll absorb the liquid and then I put it, put it in the garbage that way. Um, taking a shower, uh, is also, of course, different. There's, you can't really take a shower. We can basically wet a washcloth, wipe our bodies down, and then dry off with a towel. And we have some special pouches that have a little bit of soap in them, and we can add some hot water to that pouch and basically spray the water into a towel again because the water helps the towel helps us control that liquid. It stays on the towel as long as you don't move it really fast, and it allows us to get it back onto our bodies, and that's the best we can do. So I also know we have a bunch of kids, they always ask about the bathroom. Do you mind telling us about the bathroom on the space station? <laughs> so of course, uh, bathroom, we use water um, on the earth. We use water to uh, wash out uh, the bad stuff. But here in space, we cannot use water because it's very tricky. So instead, we use airflow to uh, capture the liquid and the solid waste. So uh, other than that, it's basically the same uh, principle. So I think we have time for another question. Do you use any robots on the space station? Actually, yes, uh, in Japanese module, we have a special uh, video camera robot. The size is like a basketball or maybe a little bit smaller, but uh, it floats, of course, this is space, and uh, that robot has a special camera and observing uh, uh, how astronauts is doing experiment. And uh, the ground flight controllers uh, always monitor what we are doing, and if necessary, they jumped in to help us. That's a, a special robot in Japanese module. Well, thank you very much. We have been very excited to talk to you here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. It was a pleasure for us to be able to spend some time with you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And thank you to all participants from the Children's Museum of Indianapolis Station. We're now resuming operational calm.